Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Lecture 5. Today, we'll be looking at a, uh, a different form of writing called cause-effect or causal analysis. And you may or may not choose to use this for your final term paper. Your choice. Um, uh, we're going to look at cause, cause and effect, well, cause or effect, whatever. And then we're going to look at comma splices. And I'm going to try and show you what comma splices are, how to fix them. Uh, we didn't really cover that in grammar. Okay, I believe in lecture three. And then finally, we will do the midterm template. Now, before I get into the whole lecture, the midterm template is also available as a separate file uh, in, in, in this component, in this module, okay? In lecture five module. You, you'll see what I mean. Like once you're looking at this video, you'll see there's also another file there, okay? All right. So today we're also going to uh, have the worst joke of the entire course. And it's coming up in about two minutes. So here we go. All right. All right. So what is cause and effect? What is physics? For those of you who enjoy the Big Bang Theory, what is physics? First, we have to ask, what is physics? No, I'm joking. Anyway, <laughs> it was a hot summer night. And... <laughs> All right. So up until about 500 years ago, it was accepted that human beings observed the sky, watched the sun come up and the sun go down, and remarked on the comfortable regularity of the sun's journey around the Earth. Okay. Um, then someone named uh, Copernicus, okay, uh, a Polish astronomer, you've got his dates there, he began to doubt the validity of the Earth-centered universe. Copernicus theorized that it was we who were going around the sun, okay? Now people began to question the cause for the relationship between the movements of the sun and the planets. The effects of the Copernican theory, here's the worst joke of the term, were astronomical. No? Large, but also astronomy? No? Anyway, all right. <laughs> I like that one. Okay. So, obviously, the, um, the effects of the Copernican theory would have, uh, like, profound consequences for religion. Think about that. Do I even have to elaborate? Like, that's pretty obvious. Uh, then um, science, right? Philosophy and art. Like so, so many different examples I could give you, right? If you're interested, uh, if you think of art for the longest time, the um, much of art deals with religious iconography, going going back historically, or portraiture, or maybe landscapes. Then all of a sudden, all of these new ideas start to emerge, and you have painters such as Caravaggio, for those of you who maybe are in art history, who all of a sudden starts painting daily life. And people don't really understand what, what he's doing at, 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 at the time, but we certainly understand now looking back, all right? That he's moving away from all of those conservative uh, uh, viewpoints of, of the world, of the universe, of whatever. So this is exactly what we're going to be looking at with this type of writing. Now, again, you don't have to use this model. Most of you will end up using the argument model for the final term paper that we will be discussing in lecture eight, all right? I've got them all behind me. I've got everything behind me. So in lecture eight, okay? All right. And so causal analysis then, okay? These types of papers are interested in identifying reasons for something and the, or, or and actually I should say, and or the consequences of. I'll, I'll elaborate what I mean by, by what I just said. And so... Cause effect or causal analysis. If you're ever asked to do a causal analysis, this is what the instructor is asking for. Okay. And it's so it's a rhetorical pattern based on the following aspects. And this is this is really straightforward stuff. What I'm trying to show you here is some of us get a bit intimidated when it comes to creating an argument on our own. So I thought, why not introduce you to this method simply because you may find it easier. Like let's say you're a struggling C student, for instance, right? Well, then you may find this a bit easier than actually coming up with an argument on your own. That, that's all. So you can use this or not. All right. I won't do that joke again. OK. All right. So these aspects. Number one, the writer attempts to analyze the reasons that led to something such as and then notice I have in bold an event or decision. OK, I'll come back to that in just a moment. Why do I have the words event or decision in bold? And I'll come back to that. Then we could also do the very same thing with the possible consequences of that event or decision. And then finally, you could do both. But if you're going to use this method for our purposes here in this course, don't do both. 
choose either the cause or the causes that led to an event or a decision or the effects that that uh, sorry or the the sorry yes the, the effects that uh, that that occurred because of that event or decision so now let me explain what i mean by event or decision again i keep going back to the example i, I think i gave this before so i want to write a causal analysis on feminism well would that work no it wouldn't because it's not like you can you can lead up to, you know, the beginnings of feminism or the consequence. Well, you could do the consequences of feminism, but my God, you, you would have a 50,000 page paper on your hands, right? More. Now, so so my point is a, a decision or an event, it should be something that is specific that happened in time. Something where you can put your finger on it and say, okay, that happened right there. What led up to that? Or because that happened, what happened after? something very specific okay and there's hundreds of examples that i could give you on that but i'll throw just a couple at, at you right now so let's just say you wanted to do okay let's do feminism once again well how about instead of that we found a bill that was passed that had consequences in relation to feminist ideologies okay now we're getting better at narrowing down our topic so that would be that would be one way of thinking about it okay or I think in the course outline, I have I have a, a very general example or, or question which deals with um, what were the causes that led up to a certain, you know, war or something like that. OK, I, I can't even remember if it's still in the outline because it's it is ge very general. But could I do instead? Was there one specific battle that actually changed the course of a war, like something more specific that happened in a specific amount of time? And so, and I'll get into a couple of examples of exactly what I mean by this in just a moment. I think on page two, yeah, I'll, I'll, like in two seconds, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that, all right? And so, the purposes of cause effect then, okay? Um, what were the causes of S or what are the effects of S? Where S means the subject, right? The event or the decision, okay? So, that, that's, that's more or less, you know, a general introduction to the art form, okay? Or the rhetorical pattern. Now, to, this is where I'll start to elaborate now. To write an effective causal analysis, you must. And this, these sound a bit obvious, but even if you don't choose to use causal analysis, I want you to be aware of what I'm going to start talking about now, okay? Regardless of, of the pattern that you use. Even if you're using the argument, be aware of these things, okay? You must be honest and objective in your investigation. Now, at first, that sounds so obvious, does it not? Okay. But what does the research or background information actually say? Far too often, okay, far too often, we make up our minds before we even get into the writing process. And if you do that, and I've, I think I've mentioned that already with structure, if you do that, you will start to get frustrated, okay? Let me just look at one thing here. It's one, I'm, just, I'm just grabbing the, the course outline. I just want to see. Yes, so just in lecture four. I talked about that, right? Remember in lecture four where the, the thesis, uh, sorry, where the introduction was and remember how long it took to get to that. So the same idea applies there. Be objective and honest in your, in your investigation. Don't have your mind made up already until you do the work, okay? Second, analyze complex ideas carefully to distinguish between the remote and the immediate. That's how we begin to kind of pare down, moving from a general idea into something much more specific. So keep that in mind too. And remember, when we get into uh, discussion groups, uh, well, you know, whatever you want to call them, workshops, what have you, uh, we, we'll start talking about this. I think I mentioned that already. We'll start talking about it and we'll play around with ideas. Maybe you'll throw something at me and then I'll suggest, well, how about this? Or maybe pare it down this way. That, that's exactly how the course will run, right? And so be aware of that too. Then finally, not finally, but, but in, most importantly, or almost more, most importantly, don't be swayed by, by your initial biases and prejudices. Okay. This happens so often where a student or and, and not just students, like, like in general, uh, writers, editors, what have you, they already have their minds made up about, about whatever the, the, the topic is. And so they'll go out and try and cherry pick information to fit their ideas or their arguments. This, well, there's a lot of bad science. Those of you who are in the sciences, you're going to find that out very quickly. 
A lot of bad science out there for a variety of reasons, which maybe I'll get into later on in the course, all right? Okay, so I'll give you an example. The reason for a given worker's strike is greed and laziness. This, is, this goes on all the time, right? Everything is about money. And so when everything is reported through, you know, mainstream media, well, quite often mainstream media will take the side of management, quite often. And, and that makes sense. If you want to challenge me on that, just think about the whole idea of mainstream media. The idea, like, in or, like is there advertising with mainstream media? Well, yes, there is. Like, in other words, they have to generate a profit. So quite often, they will take the side of management over the worker. Okay? And so, um, and th th like I said, quite often, they don't actually get into the minutia of, of, of the subtleties of, of, of the actual strike. Right? Usually money is the one thing that is talked about, but often money can be secondary to other, other issues that are going on, okay? And so don't oversimplify. This is a really important one. Don't oversimplify. This is a perfect example. I've seen this in essays, okay? The reason for violence in society is caused by all the violence on television. Okay. Well, the minute I see an essay like that, the first, the first comment I'm going to make is, so there wasn't any violence before television, before the invention of television? Of course there was, right? Like, so, so in other words, you want to be careful with generalizations, okay? Be aware that an event can be triggered by a complex variety of things. And the example I love to give, um, what was the cause of the First World War? Some guy that no one's ever heard about, okay, was killed and all of a sudden the world went to war, right? The Archduke, Archduke Ferdinand, like we, we've all learned that, right? Maybe it was a bit more complex than that. As a matter of fact, if you want, oh gosh, if you want to see something really funny, check out Norm MacDonald. I, I know he's a bit of a right-wing co comedian, but check him out and Germany, okay? Uh, Germany and, and, and war, okay? Uh, oh, man, it is funny. It is funny. Anyway. Um, and finally, then, never mistake coincidence for causation. And I have some funny examples of that as well. If you go online, uh, take a look at um, it, just connections between the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy. And, it, and it's bizarre. There's all these conspiracy theories out there about how there, there's connections between the two. Um, Lincoln was murdered, assassinated in Ford Theater, and uh, Kennedy was assassinated while while he was riding in a Lincoln. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, they all have car names, but so what? <laughs> anyway, so watch out for that too. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, f ultimately, selecting your focus. All right, focus and scope is very important for this style of writing. That, I'm, that, I'm going back now to the idea of starting with, uh, you know, the cause of war. Well, no, no, way too general. Instead, let's pare it down. That's what I mean by that. And so, now I'll show you a couple of examples, right? This, you know, I'm not quite sure how long this part of the, the lecture will take. Maybe another 20 minutes. And, but then we'll get into more stuff. Um, so, the key, notice I've got it bold. Okay, I've got it bolded, I should say. <laughs> Limit your topic. Limit your topic. Don't take on too much. All right? And so here is a simple, I mean, a really simplistic template for uh, a thesis. The causes of S, meaning your subject, right? The decision or the event uh, were A, B, and C. I know, I know. That's awfully simple. Well, okay, but could we then do something with that? I'll show you a few tricks in just a moment. All right? Okay, so um, the principal, I'll just do a quick one for you, all right? The principal causes at university, something just popped up on my screen and I'm just trying to get rid of it. Norton is trying to do some, some work here. All right, anyway, I don't think you guys saw that. Don't worry about it. Uh, so the principal causes of failure at university are lack of basic skills, lack of study skills, and lack of motivation. Okay, that's not necessarily true. In fact, the, my, in my opinion, the number one reason why individuals cannot make it through university is economics. Simple as that. Simply can't afford it, right? Uh, or other things come up because, because of economics, right? 
But let me just show you two things here, all right? I just want to show you two things to start getting you thinking about how to put an introduction together. Just the, the fundamental elements, all right? I know I hinted at this before, but here's a good, like, just highlight, highlight. The principal causes of S were A, B, and C. And then make some notes for yourself. Let's just say you laid it out as A, B, and C. It doesn't matter how you laid them out. Then you would deal with each of those areas, right? Sections, areas of argument, whatever you want to call it. You would deal with them in that order, okay? Okay? And that's very important because that gives you a nice, a smooth flow to the paper. So then look at the examples that I have here. The principal causes of failure in university are lack of basic skills, lack of study skills, and lack of motivation. Notice how I'm being consistent there, right? Just the way in which I, I, I express it. I'm going to come back to that in another lecture later on, okay? It's much, far, much further down the road, okay? Further, farther. It's interesting how there are some times where you can actually interchange those. Not, not very often, not very often. Uh, there's a Ford commercial now that I'm thinking of Ford um, where it says drive further or could say drive farther. In other words, like further your driving experience or simply go a longer distance. All right. I shouldn't have said that, though, because that's very rare. Very rare. Those two words mean very different things for the most part. All right. Anyway. And so you could write a paper like this based on examples from other markets. Right. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself here. And so then you could do the effects of S. A, B, and C, right? And so the effects uh, of a city losing its professional team, okay, sports team, uh, would be a decline in small business sales, a loss of financial investment and into the community and the demise of sport culture in the city. So all I'm trying to show you here is that's basically how we could lay out the argument, the sections of the argument, the areas of argumentation, whatever terms you want to use. All right? Okay. And then that's why I said there, yeah, you could write a paper like this based on examples from other markets, right? If the data supports your argument, okay? Again, just, just one quick example. We, we probably won't even come back to something like that. I'm just showing you how to put it together, okay? I would suggest, though, that if you choose to use this, this type of argumentation um, or analysis, you're probably better off using choosing the... the the something what what's uh, sorry you're you're better off choosing the events that led up to something rather than the consequences after because for a number of reasons when you choose the events that led to something specific your paper becomes much more specific but when you do the effects of something two or three problems can emerge first you might lead to speculation simply because two you chose a topic which was too recent so in other words, you haven't actually, there's not enough data out there to actually prove whatever argument you're trying to make. So be aware of that as, as well. And again, we'll discuss that in, in workshops. Okay. Topics will come up later, later, not now. Like, like I'm just trying to, you know, show you a few things ahead of time. All right. And then how could we then, and I think you would agree with the two examples I gave, they're not very argumentative. Well, okay. So now I'm on the top of page three. How could we turn that into an argument? Well, all right. The above factors, uh, I'm just going back now to what I was talking about on page two, okay? Your section headings, A, B, C, whatever, all right? Were the most significant in the destruction or slash development of X, okay? I could have put S there, whatever your subject is. Notice by simply adding language like the most significant, most important, all of a sudden, it may not be the greatest thesis, but it is certainly now getting more into the argumentative mode. Again, make a highlight there. Okay? And so, make sure you support your assertions, and then you would do that through proof. And what do we mean by proof? Well, you know, go out and find some research, see what the research has to say. Okay? Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. And so there it is, right there in bold. I found that doing the causes leading up to something, like to the event or the decision, usually work better than the effects, right? Not always, not always. You may, you may find a topic and think, no, that works fine. But that, I'm, I'm, again, I'm just giving you suggestions, all right? Okay, so in general then, causes are usually more tangible than effects, right? And, and, and the effects, as I said, can lead to speculation. That's all. I'm just repeating myself now. I just want you to understand. Okay? 
And then there you go. You want to write on the leading causes to a certain war, feminism, okay? Instead, I already shown you, okay, no, let's get something more specific, something about that topic, and then, then maybe we can do it that way. And I also have there, if you really are, are at, at wit's end to, to, to find some kind of topic for yourself, you could do an invention, you could do a medical cure, right? Med med medical cures, many of you are, are in the sciences hoping to get into medicine. Those are very interesting. Many m medical breakthroughs happen uh, out of accident or coincidence. It's very interesting, all right? And so, so any, anyway, so that's one way of putting a paper together. It's not the best way, all right? But as I said, let's just say you're really struggling and you're trying to get from that C range into the B range. Well, then that will work, all right? Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is comma splices, all right? And so these are really tough to catch, really tough to catch. As I go through it, you'll see what I mean. All right. How do we know, okay? Well, first of all, comma splices, they're grammatical errors that join two complete sentences. Remember back, I was talking about independent clauses. Well, now, same idea. We're going to join two independent clauses or complete sentences with a comma, okay? You can't do that. You can't do that. And so, and, and that those are the things I watch for. Are we fixing these problems along the way? And so how do we fix them? How do we catch them, right? Well, for instance, just take a look at the sentence here. Joey went to the grocery store, comma, he needed to buy eggs for supper. All right, well, that's incorrect. Why is it incorrect? Well, Joey went to the grocery store is an independent clause. It is a sentence that stands on its own. He needed to buy eggs for supper. So is that. So I can't just join those two with a comma. But there are different ways that we could fix this, all right? So a comma cannot join two complete sentences. There it is right there. If you remember back to lecture three, complete thoughts are also known as independent clauses. Okay, so because I've done the lecture before in different, in different ways, uh, that's why I always get ahead of myself, all right? But how do, we, how do we find these things? I'll give you a couple of hints that aren't even in the notes. Compare the clauses they separate. Okay? Compare the groups of words that the comma separates. If they can act as complete sentences, then you have found a comma splice. All right? Okay. How do we fix these things? How do we re rehabilitate? The simplest way is to simply separate the two cla independent clauses, complete thoughts, with a period. But sometimes, if you separate them with a period, that can get a bit choppy. Um, Terry plays hockey, period. Terry plays football, period. Terry plays soccer, period. So notice there, technically that is correct, but it doesn't sound very good. So are there other ways that we could write sentences like that? Sure, and let's look at them now. Yeah, so Joey went to the grocery store, period. He needed to buy eggs for supper, period. But as I said, choppy. We can then do other things with connecting words, right? And so I know they're called conjunctions, but again, I'm not going to test you on that. I'm more worried about you knowing how to write. Unless you become an English teacher, or an English professor, or an English instructor, you don't need to know that stuff. You really don't, all right? But you do know how to do this stuff when it comes to your own writing. So couple of different ways to do this. Joey went to the grocery store because he needed to buy eggs for supper. Okay, so now we've joined it. Nice, smooth sentence. Okay? You could do it with different ways as well. Joey went to the grocery store, but he forgot to buy eggs for supper. So now it all depends upon the context. Okay? And then, right? Um... Well, I, I'm almost avoiding it here, but yes, for those of you who are screaming at your screens right now, you could add a semicolon. You are allowed to do that. But, and only because nowadays we accept it. I still say you shouldn't do that. Terry plays football. Terry plays hockey. Terry plays soccer. Whatever I say, okay? With semicolons now, okay? Well, in high school, they probably told you, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but is that really good writing? Not really. It's not very effective. Terry plays football, comma, hockey, and soccer. 
I mean, why not just make your writing much smoother? Simple, simple stuff, right? So think about things like that, okay? And again, try not to overuse the, uh, the semicolon because it is an easy way out, but it isn't always necessary the correct way out, okay? If you know what I mean. All right. And so a quick reminder once again, yeah, back to lecture three. This is exactly what happens with words like however. If you remember back, I gave you many examples. Well, m not many, but, but I, I clearly pointed out, watch out for that word. So here's a couple of examples right here. The major corporations, okay, however, do not agree. That's fine. That is fine. Why? Because I can take the word however out and the two commas, the major corporations do not agree. Nothing wrong with that. So what I'm trying to show you is, yes, you can use those introductory phrases like in the middle of sentences, right? And you won't cre be creating comma splices. But let's take a look at the next one. If, however, the sentence is written this way, Justin is a great chef, comma, however, his apartment is a mess. No, that's incorrect. That's totally incorrect. And so... Basically, that's a, an example of a comma splice. All right. And so now we're on to page five. <coughs> yeah, not quite sure how long the lecture will go today. Um, we'll see. Um, and so the difference, uh, is the, yeah, the difference between those two sentences, if you're confused, I've got a couple more examples next. The difference is the first sentence follows the comma rules. Second one doesn't. Okay. I know it can be confusing. So why don't I try to end off this portion with um, a, 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 a couple of quick examples with Justin, okay? So, Justin is a great chef, period. His apartment is a mess, period. Okay, yeah, you could do that. that, that that's okay, but it's not great, okay? And so, why wouldn't we instead write something like, Justin is a great chef, comma, but his apartment is a mess, Notice there's two different things going on there. One seems to be positive, one seems to be negative. And so we can join them in a sense with the word but. And remember back to our comma rule number one. Well, the but suggests we were talking about something and now we're kind of suggesting something else. It's a different level. And again, we'll get into that in lecture. We will really get into that in lectures nine and 10 when we really start to get way more sophisticated with this stuff, all right? I, I know right now this sounds really basic, right? It won't, believe me. Believe, believe me now or listen to me later. None of you will get that reference at all. Listen to me now or believe me later. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Saturday Night Live. Anyway, so, okay, so the example there, Justin is a great chef, comma, but moving in a different attitude or whatever, but his apartment is a mess, okay? Or Justin is a great chef and his apartment is beautiful. So notice there, we're all working together along the same level, right? Okay, so so there's an example then of, you know, possible problems with comma splices and how to rehabilitate them. Now, here's, here's really how, how, here's how we really catch these things. When we go to edit our papers, the normal, like, like I would say most of us, will start at the beginning of our paper, once we think we have a final draft, and then we'll read it through and we'll just look for any mistakes. I can almost guarantee you, you will find very few, if any, if you do it that way. What? What do you mean? Well, how else would I do it? Okay, the best way to actually find problems in grammar if you're not very good, okay, uh, like if you're not very strong with, with these, the, which I wasn't, I think I've told you that four or five times now. This is some, it's a process you have to learn if it wasn't hammered into you in high school. So, so I'm with you. Okay. Like if you're struggling with this, I was there. So what would I do instead? How about we read the paper line by line? Like if you're trying to really improve, and I know this sounds crazy, but how about if we read the paper from the last sentence to the preceding sentence to the preceding sentence all the way back? Because you see, when you edit a paper that way, all of a sudden you've isolated each sentence rather than reading the whole flow of the paper. When you read the whole flow of the paper, it'll sound correct. It'll sound fine, right? Because that's the way it came out. Like that's, that's basically, that's the flow that you have given the paper. But if you go back to the end 
and then, sorry, if you go to the end and work backwards and isolate each sentence, you'd be amazed at how you can catch some of these things. And again, I know that sounds silly. I, I, I do. I can hear myself, right? It is silly, but it works. And so, but usually the, if, if, you, if you really don't believe me with that, which is fine, give it to someone else. Someone else will, will, will catch the things, right? Again, I mentioned that in lecture three, I think it was, right? Give it to someone else, they will catch your mistakes. Maybe not all of them, but they'll catch more than what you can catch, okay? Okay, so, so far then today, I gave you an alternative to the, the, the traditional argumentative model, which we will get to in lecture eight, right? Yep, lecture eight, because we still got lots of time before we get to all of that. Okay, lots of time. So the rest of the lecture today, I'm going to go through a midterm template with you. And by doing so, there's, there's a few things I want to point out. All right. Okay. And then, as I said, what I'm about to show you here is actually you can find in the module, Lectrified module, on its own. So that, like, I figured why not do both. But I wanted to include it here in your notes just so you have it. Okay. So the midterm exam template, obviously we have the name of the course, we have the, 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 uh, the number and then my name. I'm simply saying this is what it's going to look like. Then the date will be found in your course outline and it will be, let me just see here. Yes, I'm, again, I'm getting ahead of myself. So it will be remote and like this is an online course. So obviously you'll be writing it, you know, at well, wherever, wherever it's up to you. And then um, I'm going to give you two hours and 30 minutes. Okay. I'm giving you a, a bit of extra time. Okay. And uh, don't, don't ask me about that. I am. Okay. There it is. The exam will be posted in Brightspace with a time restriction. And there's two, a couple of things I want to talk about there. So on the day of the exam, there will be like right now, you can't see anything in, in Brightspace, right? Uh, in, in like in like if you go to the, the taskbar and you go to more underneath more you'll see assignments and at the moment okay yeah at the moment there's probably nothing there but in fact I've already created all that I just haven't made it visible yet so on the time like when the time comes I will make these things visible obviously but that doesn't mean you'll be able to do it that like that minute it will be all of a sudden you'll see that there was an assignment there but there may not be anything there just yet and then all of a sudden at the time uh, um, uh, like when the time restriction comes all of a sudden it'll be there and you start your exam now make sure you answer and submit your answers before the portal closes okay you only have a certain amount of time i talked about that in lecture one when i went through the course outline all right, so these are timed. This is true for all of the uh, workshop and essay writing sections, okay, all timed. And so basically then, there's two things I wanna say about that. This is gonna be the, the template for the exam, but it's not the actual exam. So the actual exam will have more specific information on it. For instance, instead of saying, okay, um, Okay, okay, I'll get to that in just a second. So make sure you include your name on the exam, all right? Just just so, it, let's just say I decide I'm gonna print them off. Well, I, I still wanna have your name on there. And then read uh, the instructions carefully. And obviously you can use all, when it says use all textual resources with you, that just simply means, you know, you can use your class notes or whatever. How, I can't really catch you anyway, right? So I don't care, okay? And then finally, the exam is worth 25% of your grade. Now, how does this work? Okay, now now we're going to get into the questions that you will have, and you will. So let me just let's slow down. Okay, so you're going to read. There's going to be an article in Brightspace. Okay, like literally, I've already put it there, but you can't see it just yet. But it will appear when the time comes. Also, about I can't remember exactly, but it's about maybe ten minutes before. I've also created a portal where. Let me just think for a second. I've created a portal which will actually which will have the actual exam rather than a template. And it will include more specific information. For instance, instead of instead of here where it says what is the author's thesis, it'll have the author's name. But also at the very end of the exam, and unlike here, 
it'll also have the in, the origin of the article. It, it'll have the information on f where the article came from, from from where the article came. So 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 in other words, you will be able to complete the exam. It'll all be there for you. Okay. So, and, and remember, if, if that sounds a bit vague, don't worry, we'll talk about that in workshop. But these are the, but these are the kind of questions I do not want to have to deal with in email because, because I, I, I end up dealing with the same question over and over again. Whereas if we talk about this in workshop, we're done. Like all, all we need is, is like two minutes to, to make sure everyone understands. Okay. And there will be one or two of you who, who will become confused or, or maybe confused right now. Fine. But let's hold off until workshop for that. Okay, that's what the workshops are for, right? Okay, and, and every year it seems like some people will choose not to do the workshops. Then all of a sudden I get, get bombarded with email. Mm -mm. No, I say I, I, I will write back simply uh, workshop question mark and I leave it at that. Okay, so let's repeat. Right now you have a template, okay? But you have more or less, okay, that's what the exam is going to look like, but you don't actually have the specifics. Well then, the specific exam with those specific sorry with those specifics you will have by the time the article is released got it okay all right again if you're not quite sure what i mean let's talk about that in workshop okay all right then you want to answer there's going to be three questions answer them separately I don't know why, but every year there seems to be one or two students who simply, they give the exam and it's one long answer. Well, that's not what I asked for. So I, I will simply not, I, I, I will not count. Like I'll give zero for the first question and the second question. So let's repeat. You will answer each of the questions separately. You will have three separate answers. One, answer. Two, answer. Three, answer. Okay, I don't know how, how, how clearer I can be, all right? So the first question, and based on everything we've been doing already, I think you could have guessed this one, couldn't you? What is the author's thesis? Now, with this one, you either get it or you don't. There is no, there's no partial marks here for the thesis. So make some notes right now. The thesis will be a very specific sentence, one sentence from the article. Don't give me five lines. If you do that and you happen to be lucky enough to include the thesis, I'll give you zero. I'm looking for one sentence, okay? One specific sentence, right? And um, you either get it or you don't. Then secondly, it's like, this is no surprise. What are the main arguments? What are the main areas of argument? And so in that one, you can elaborate a bit, right? As long as when I'm marking that one, I'll, I'll understand if, if you have been following along with the areas of argument that we've been talking about, not only with Don't Blame the Eater, but with uh, discussion in the workshop as well. So I'll, I'll be able to figure that one out too, okay? Then in number three, you're going to, and now this, this will be the second time that you'll be doing a summary, you'll be summarizing the author's overall attitudes towards the, the article's subject matter, okay? And you'll be given 20% for that. Like, in other words, I'll give you 20, a mark out of 20. Then, um, partial marks will be taken off up to one point if your citations or paraphrasing are incorrect. So, what would you want to have in front of you for your, your exam or, or want to go back and look at? Well, I would suggest go back to Lecture 2, Summaries and In-Text Citations. Make sure you understand how to do those. Okay? Now, first, a couple of other things that we could talk about at this point. When you start number three, do, so do not worry about style, APA or MLA, in one or two. Go ahead and just answer the questions, okay? Uh, once you do the, the, um, the thesis, you don't need a citation, okay? But once you get to number three, then right there include, I will be using, and just put, you know, APA or MLA. Just write whichever one you're using. That way... I can tell, I'll, I'll, that way I'll know how to mark, <laughs> okay? Like if you don't tell me which one you're using, then I have no idea how to mark the thing. And, and that's where I'm not leaning it at all. Like I'll, I'll just look at it and say, I can't do anything with this. And so marks off. So simple as that, just write, I will be using, there it is, okay? And so then the summary, I think this is pretty straightforward. The summary will be based on your summarization, okay? Organization, but really when I say organization, what do we really mean? Your own areas. Like, think about how you'll put the material together for your answer. Okay? Then, 
Uh, grammar, punctuation, style and spelling. I mean, those are all obvious. And in the time restraint, you probably won't have much time to play around with, you know, grammar check and spell check and all of that. So, but, uh, but I will be looking for those things. Okay, that is part of the course. Okay. And then finally, uh, you're paraphrasing and direct quotes. Okay. With proper citations. So again, if you're wondering, you know, maybe, maybe you skipped a couple of lectures, well, then you'll be in trouble. So you'll want to go back and make sure you see what I've been talking about in lecture two. All right. Okay. So the final version of your exam then should be in Times New Roman 12. And the only reason why I say that is really for everything you, you submit, um, most instructors will be asked for Times New Roman 12. And I have no idea why. Like it's just, just something that has become common usage. Simple as that. All right. And then um, submit it to Brightspace. Okay. By, by the time the portal closes or before the portal closes uh, as a PDF. And then I'll do a couple of things. I haven't decided yet. I probably won't print them off. I probably will simply put comments at the end of your exam. Right. And then send it back to you. And um, please don't ask me about return times. Like, it's impossible for me to know that, you know, at this early stage, because I may be away, but I still will be able to access things. Uh, but, but something may come up. The only, I, I'm saying that only because every year I get someone asking, you know, so when, when will we get our exam, Mark? And will we? It's like, just take it easy, okay? You will get them eventually, all right? <laughs> okay. So then, as it says right there, indicate whether you're using MLA or APA to start question three. And then don't worry at all about, let's just say you decide that you're going to do APA. Don't worry about giving me a cover sheet or a, a, like a, a um, oh gosh, now I have a mental block here, but a first page with all the information and all that, right? Like no, a title, title, okay? Title page, whatever. Uh, don't worry about that, all right? Just, just go ahead and answer the questions. You also will not need a works cited or a reference page. Like don't worry about that either because we haven't even done that yet right? We haven't really gotten into how to put a really good reference page or work cited together. And we will. We'll get to that. When, when we start worrying about the final term paper, that's where we'll worry about all that kind of stuff. All right? So for now, slow down. Uh, don't worry about those things. And you certainly will not get extra marks if you do happen to include it in a title page for APA or if you happen to include it proper whatever for MLA. No, that's not really the assignment. So don't worry about that. So Let's go back now. I just want to make sure, I know I'm, I'm repeating myself now, but I just want to make sure we all understand. So at, at the exact time, okay, that the portal opens, an article will appear, well, not appear, but it'll be there, and then you write your exam. But I'm going to make sure that I've given you the exam a couple of minutes early. I can't remember exactly how long, but enough so you can, you, 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 you can take a quick look just to make some notes for yourself. And again, if you're wondering what, what I mean by that, then you haven't been following along as much as you should have. There will be a bit of information in the actual exam that is not in the template that you will need. All right? Okay. So, um, I think that might be enough for today. And, um, yeah, I, I, think, I think that's good enough. And so, I, again, I'm going to close off with this. Uh, do not watch lectures on YouTube. There are a whole lot of my lectures on YouTube, and this has become a problem because for some reason I can't delete some of the older lectures. And a couple of you, I can tell, have been watching the old lectures and, and you actually submitted assignments. Well, how in the world could you submit assignments when they haven't been made available to you yet? I understand why you did, and so don't do that. For 99% for of you out there, you don't have to worry about that at all. But for the small percentage who think that they can get away with doing that, don't do it. So again, watch only watch the lectures that are posted in Brightspace. The YouTube stuff is old. It's old. So so and things have changed. Things have changed when it comes to documentation style. So you don't want to do that and lose marks. So only watch the lectures on Brightspace. Okay? Shall I say that one more time? No, because now I'm just wasting your time. So anyway, we will have time to discuss all of this again when it comes to the workshop. And um, other than that, yeah, I think, I think we're good for the day. Okay? All right. So have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.